boom. In this video, we're going to cover what's new and improved in Motion version 4.1.2. Really, the update's Motion version 4.1, but we issued two small patches as well. So let's jump in with the new feature in this update under the license on your menu. When you manage a license key by logging out of a workstation, as long as you logged in before with a license, you're going to get an instant login button where you can click it to instantly log back in without having to paste or re-enter or find your license. Now moving on, we'll set up a quick scene going over to the shapes tool, create two circles, and then we'll paste in an emoji face of a monkey. And that's our scene. So we'll go over to focus now. Create a new group. As you'd guess, we'll create our first group called monkey. Select the monkey layer and group the selected layers together. I'll go ahead and change the label color here to green so we can quickly identify the monkey in our timeline. And next we'll go and select our circles and create a new group for those, calling them boring circles. So now that we have these two groups created, we can hover on them and we'll get this little mini bar of functions to run to lock, shy, select, uh, grab properties, etc. from the layers that are part of the groups. Also being able to use the normal focus function to uh, solo out the composition and timeline or refocus back to the original. These little icons here you can click to turn off to revert back to the initial state before you ran the mini functions. And these little mini functions also show up on any of the palette screens. So you can also reorganize the palettes like this, or you can hover over them to run the little mini functions that might be helpful for the different palettes or also for the easing palettes as well uh, as the color. So moving on, we can check out a new tool with this scene here. We have a bunch of circles that have this kind of oscillating animation effect. It's just the delay tool on the scale and stroke width of circle one. Uh, kind of rippling to all the other layers. So if we select the layers and want it to work with the endpoints, we could go to the stagger screen here, get a little preview of what we're going to be doing, some duration property kind of readouts, an apply button, this cool apply lock button to live preview changes, and then a bunch of parameters down at the bottom. So we'll go and click the apply button here, and we're going to see that the layers jumped in our timeline to match the CTI based on the first parameter we have. So every time you clicked apply without apply lock being on, it's going to jump to the CTI alignment. So if we switch this to layer, we're gonna use the index one of our group, which would in this case be circle one, and we'll turn on click lock. So when we change parameters at the bottom, we're gonna be able to preview them in our timeline and just kind of you know get exactly what we want, even changing things like the interval and seeing the live change in our timeline, which is helpful if you need to time stuff. The other parameters are pretty easy to kind of play around with. We also have this randomized toggle at the bottom. Every time you click it, it's going to give you a different seed of endpoints uh, randomly for the groups of layers that you have selected. So let's set this back up to kind of like an even interval, uh, just, you know, very basic. And we'll be able to preview this with exactly even intervals for all of our circles popping in for this cool animation. And I'll go turn off apply lock and we'll jump to the graph screen of stagger, which can do some more interesting stuff. So we can just go ahead, look at our timeline, select the layers that we want to work with, go on over to the apply lock button, just the same, turn it on to see live previews of whatever we're changing in the interface in our timeline and do stuff with any of the parameters to live preview them as well. So this is just a fun way to, you know, maybe do something that's not just even intervals, get a little bit unique, have kind of a you know, like an animator's uh, kind of visual for endpoints or something, like a behind the scenes curve. It's kind of cool. So yeah, you can play around with these parameters. You can do stuff with the grouping parameter to, you know, like set groups of layers together on the curve. You can invert them and, and just play around. And it's, a, it's pretty fun just to preview and, and work with. So if we go on over to just the beginning here, we can even do stuff with kind of like nonlinear curves, setting up pretty strange adjustments and you can just drag around your group if you wanted to retime it differently. And now we have this kind of cool like ripply rollout endpoint for our animation. Or, or we could, you know, quickly just swap the kind of endpoint stagger of the group. Let's jump to the crazy parameter called duration type and set it to the second type for work area. Things are going to jump around until you set your work area in your timeline or as you move it, the apply lock is going to match the layers that you have selected to try to match the curve to also the work area duration that you set in kind of this live preview if you had specific things you were trying to line up. It's again just kind of like a fun input method, I guess, if you really wanted to get fancy with your in points or out points for layers or 
how you're choosing to stagger them. So now that we're happy with this animation, we'll turn off the apply lock and go close stagger and look at another new addition to motion version 4.1.2. Setting up a quick scene with the shapes tool of a triangle, we'll grab the rotation and position properties and we'll throw the dynamics effect onto these properties just to get a quick kind of like random movement so we can jump into this example. So now that we have this moving triangle, we can not only admire it, but also use it to add some cool animation to. So I'll select the triangle. We'll go on over to the emitter here. And so the emitter is obviously the simulator that you can draw in and, you know, make this like emission animations. But now we added this thing called save motion path, which you can also preview and also, wow, very exciting, you can clear. So I'll click save motion path when you have the layer selected. When you click preview, the uh, motion window is going to pull in the animation into the simulation so you can preview, uh, as you'd guess, what was happening in your timeline. And another very cool benefit of the being able to preview the motion path that you're doing is you can literally like live change your parameters and see how they would affect the uh, like animation that you pulled in. So changing things like the count, uh, you can like really refine what you're doing with this emitter system, maybe adjusting the distance or whatever. Uh, you can literally just preview your whole animation and really like nail the visual that you're looking for or the asset that you wanna make. So if you're happy with this animation before you click record, there's actually two different dimensions you can record at, like the small one, or if you press tilde on your keyboard, you can record at a larger dimension with a maximized panel. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click record and just let our preview uh, preview. I'll save the parameters just so we have this nice kind of like new emitter set up as our defaults. Let this go a little bit faster and then click stop recording whenever we're happy. I'll press tilde again to go back to my, you know, minimized view. And when you click add, you're going to see that we get this kind of cool emitter asset that's now following our triangle perfectly from the save motion path. Sometimes you have to like align these assets just a little bit depending on like what your parameters were so they fit the animation better. But this is a very lightweight, like super fun, quick, easy to make asset that you can use in a ton of different ways. Um, in this case, you know, we're just making a little particle trail on a triangle. We also added the save motion path ability to the other simulations like Canvas, which in some sense is like the inverse of the emitter because you have the particle field to interact with. You know, you go set up your parameters as you want for whatever the simulation is. In this case, we'll do like kind of this weird spacey field. I'll save the motion path of my selected layer and we'll go and preview this so we can see do the same thing as we did with the emitter, checking out what our parameters might look at. So I'll hit record or stop recording if we want to adjust the canvas field a little bit more. You can hit reset to always uh, reset all your parameters back to your whatever ones you had saved on over to the spacing here and just kind of turn that down so we have a little bit denser particle field to preview. Let's actually go and preserve the comp ratio and also turn on click lock. These are some nice default preferences I like just to fit the animation to whatever the composition is a little bit easier. We'll go ahead and let this preview and record at the same time. And when it's finished recording, we'll go ahead and click stop recording and then add it to our timeline to fit with everything. But to the timeline, I actually just realized I did record this without pressing tilde. So we have this 400 by 400 essentially kind of asset, but you know, you can easily get it to fit to your comp and still pretty usable even for a pretty low res image. I should have pressed tilde there, but I forgot to. There we go. We have this kind of live simulation that's doing a lot with some particles with very, very lightweight assets in just a couple seconds. If we wanted to spice this up more, we can grab this canvas and just drop it into a new composition, click inside of the composition and double click the rectangle here to add a kind of like background element. We'll change the color to black and go back to the first comp and we can throw an effect on here called mini max, which is a channel effect. And we'll kind of make these canvas particles look a little bit more chunky like this. So preview it and you can see, you know, pretty interactive looking simulation. I can throw like a warp effect onto the triangle to further make this all look uh, cool. And we'll preview this after trimming it to the work area. And yeah, it's a uh, pretty like, you know, this is all just from saving the motion path, throwing some parameters onto the simulations and 
you know, having some cool assets. Actually, I'll throw this emitter above the canvas as well. And there are our assets that we created uh, with the new save motion path from motion version 4.1.2. Super dope. And what's also nice about this uh, kind of setup is we can go and grab the triangle again, save motion path again, and throw all kinds of different effects or parameters onto another emitter or another canvas sequence and just drop those onto the timeline and stack a bunch of the simulations for an even cool effect. But let's move on to another setup and we can go ahead and grab the shapes effect, uh, drop a couple circles onto here. And we just want some keyframes. We'll set them on rotation, which I realize is not great for a circle but we just wanna look at the timeline for kind of like a, what a project might look like with some keyframes on layers, which we have here. Select your layers and we can now use a new tool called Trim to Keys, which you can go and find on the tool screen or by searching under the new category, Trim to Keys, and you can trim just the in point or out point or both. And there you go, you Trim to Keys, uh, which is a nice uh, user requested feature we're able to add. Another improvement just to like the usability of the different text fields is you can now do simple math in any of the like the number fields. So if you wanted to multiply, divide, add, subtract, etc., you can now do that in these text fields, which is pretty handy just to quickly, yeah, I guess multiply, divide, add, or subtract as you'd guess uh, whatever your text field is. Now you can do that. So uh, cool new addition. Uh, also, we fit into this update. So. Another kind of change to the UI is we added the ability, kind of like you'd see in After Effects, for uh, different properties. You can actually like just drag with your mouse, like click the number and drag, and you can adjust the numbers. Or of course, for the parameter, you could click into a more like advanced control with the slider and the like incrementer. Let's set up another scene. Uh, we'll use all of our knowledge about the save motion path to just set up something similar again. Just grab the position on some random shape throw dynamics on here just so it starts to move. And now of course we have a motion path uh, that we didn't have to keyframe at least and we can use for this example. Save the motion path in the emitter. We're gonna go ahead and preview this. A uh, nice new benefit is this kind of like lotto or randomize feature we added. If you command click any of these property categories to the left side of the parameters, it'll randomize all of the parameters in that category. So if you switch to any of the other categories like this you would and command click you were just going to only randomize the numbers in that uh, category at once and then of course you can reset to your default preferences but you know this is kind of a nice way just to stumble through different parameters that might be fun to use maybe a uh, animation style you didn't expect and another nice benefit of being able to like preview whatever animation you're working with and just go through a bunch of different looks if you wanted to find something different or unexpected. Moving back to the home screen, we can take a look at some improved like modularity for the UI. Uh, you can now drag any of the tools on the home screen pretty much wherever you want in this little section down at the bottom. You have like this power bar section of tools that'll always be visible. And then the tools at the bottom will get like a scrollable section if your UI got smaller. But it's nice to finally be able to, you know, kind of customize the home screen a little bit further. Go and enable pin tools and you can look at the all category and from here you can unpin or pin new tools that'll show up on the home screen and then go back to the home screen and you can reorder and drag them around however you want and generally we're heading towards like being able to you know fully customize everything in this ui uh and i will tell you a little tidbit in, or secret in this video there's a little ufo above the timeline as your kind of frame snap it's kind of like a teleporting through the timeline which is kind of fitting today so any of the palettes in the UI or libraries of things you create, you can now reorder and customize further, including like for the easing screen or the focus groups, et cetera. Uh, just working on making uh, this UI exactly what you want. A small kind of like usability improvement, if we go on over to the color screen here, is now when you select a layer and you copy it, you can now see a little preview of what the fill and stroke is that you have kind of like on your clipboard. If you wanted to like, paste it somewhere else. Now you kind of have a reference. You can, of course, paste this to multiple layers or just one layer at a time, but it's just nice to be able to see what you're pasting. So just a small little UI upgrade, not, not as fancy as the rest of this video, but still a nice usability improvement. Another usability improvement on the UI side is on the shape screen. You can now also preview like the fill or stroke. So if you turn off the different parameters or properties for the shapes tool, now you can actually preview in the UI uh, what you're going to be creating 
as well. So I'll save that and we can move on to the least exciting thing in this update, but a helpful improvement to the sort feature. Just so we can preview this, I'll move the project panel over here and we can search for the sort tool. And when we run it, we'll now be able to sort only like the selected items in the layer with this preference down at the bottom. So I can enable this and grab a folder like motion for videos, run the sort tool, and it's only gonna be focused on what's selected. This also works for multiple folders. And that is the motion version 4.1.2 update. Thanks for supporting Mount MoGraph and the tools we make. Peace.